What's up guys? Welcome back to the one man show. I am the man or the man and that is the one multi-time boxing champion IBO, IBF. Why you said it is so nice? UOB, NTUC, <laughs> <Basket>. POSB. <laughs> and today why you uh, giving them airtime? <laughs> and today on the casting couch we have Introduce yourself, bro. Hi guys, I'm Daniel Jelly, also known as uh, Tyson. Tyson. In the squared circle, according to him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, we're gonna we're gonna start things off a bit differently because we have a very important announcement to make. So these two guys uh, were supposed to fight at KBX Grand on March the 29th yep, at yeah. the Pavilion, but because of the coronavirus or COVID-19, whatever you want to call it, uh, that fight, no, the fight card has been moved to... It's going to be in June. I think we will only announce the date and the venue once is confirmed. But for now, it has been moved to June. So, let's get the admin stuff out of the way first. Uh, those who have bought your tickets, if you do want a refund, you can just call them up, right? Yeah, I can just. Uh, but I think I contacted all of them, so they didn't want a refund. They will still come to the show. They will still come to the fight. And yeah, you are still going to fight for the belt? Yeah, still, still. It's still pretty much the same same card, same same opponent for everybody. It's just going to be moved to June. Okay. Uh, Same opponent? Same opponent. For both of you? I've never seen him before. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, let's let's begin with this topic right now. Uh. I'm not sure if anything like this has ever happened before in any of your careers, but when you guys have been preparing, now it's we are in mid to late Feb mm-hmm. and you're supposed to fight and March. Mm-hmm. So you're, you should, your guys should be in the thick of your training camps, right? Yeah. Yep. So when something like this happens, how do you guys... I mean, first of all, we'll, we'll start with you, Tyson. How, how do you feel about this cancellation? Not cancellation, this uh, postponement or delay. Um, to be honest, actually, I kind of expected it because of all the uh, events being cancelled, especially the major events like the one year C. Sorry, one year C. My bad. Oh, one 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 championship. Oops, one championship. <laughs> Oops, <laughs> one championship. Uh, competition. So, and uh, and this thing, the thing is that the virus just just went up to orange, right? Orange code orange. Or yeah, was yeah. It? yeah. So uh, it couldn't get any more worse. I hope so. To predict extra precautions I think Willie did the right choice in order to uh, keep everyone safe he just postponed it but you know we're actually expecting it right right how about you one? how do you feel I mean you we know you're sad from <laughs> from Instagram we, we know you're sad <laughs> but honestly how sad is sad I think I'm pretty much okay to be honest I am fine because if I were to be sad because of this I think it's quite pathetic well you are I think there are a lot of <laughs> things in the world that's happening that, that genuinely needs we, we genuinely need to be sad about <laughs> so I think it's going off selfish if I'm just sad about this but I think you know we are in Singapore boxing yeah. things like this happen <laughs> even in the amateurs we can be training then oh flight, yeah. a fight didn't happen or tournament cancelled or we got no money so it has happened before in the amateurs <laughs> so we are well prepared for stuff like this yeah. sort of right okay we'll get back to that <laughs> amateur topic later now let's let's start proper as per usual Tyson how do you get a name dude oh to be honest I mean when I first fought my first few amateur fights um, okay so I was actually inspired by him so I kind of like relate to him in, in, in a way that um, because of my height and like for my height and my weight I'm kind of like the or maybe the shortest uh, person for my weight so how tall I've, are you how tall are you I'm quite tall actually I'm 165 okay that's not that that's confidence I'm quite tall <laughs> <laughs> I'm 165 I'm average actually but, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, but I think I think we've been if I think people who have problems with weight cut but I think he <laughs> has been very comfortable with the weight that he's been fighting on just so I just let him continue, <laughs> just let him continue. Yeah, and then so um, yeah so I figure out maybe I should you know improvise some some of um, you know some of a fighter's move or style so I watch you know kind of watch YouTube saw this Mike Tyson and and saw that you know he was kind of short for his weight and he used to knock a lot of people out especially the heavy weights and um, I thought maybe I should give it a try you know follow his style and all that and um, 
next thing you know i'm doing it in, an, in the ring <laughs> and after like four or five fights I just people start calling like just shouting hey you fight like tyson and then all of a sudden the seven or the eight fight and people were like hey let's go tyson and that's how i think that's how i got it i don't really like yeah before he had this maggie eh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he had like the ball no. shaved cut yeah. then with the, the, the stripes i think at the yeah. side the <laughs> proper mike tyson yeah, the, the, the one that walks the yeah, street yeah, without the, the friendly maggie look now yeah and do my my <laughs> fiance actually asked me to grow some hair of him, so I, was like, <laughs> I was like okay she didn't want me she wanted me to try a new look on so i was like all right yeah, yeah because uh even before i know your real name people were telling me that hey uh you need to watch out for this guy. Like he's he's quite good. It's like who? Oh, we we all call him Tyson. It's like what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I also remember when I was uh, boxing. We were from the same gym. I to be honest, I didn't even see him around because I was away, busy training. And as and as suddenly people were talking to me about, hey, who's this guy? Tyson, Tyson, Tyson. Tyson. And one day I see this guy moving. Wow, <laughs> 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 this guy is freaking Tyson. <laughs> what specifically the? Yeah, the the movement. Cause Tyson's got the got the nice head movement, movement yeah. the sudden head movement, the move the movements to the side, very explosive, and he's short, and he doesn't cut that much weight. I think he walks around at what? What's your walking around weight? Fifty nine. Yeah, you 59? walk around at fifty nine. I walk. I sleep. I eat. I- I, I train it's all 59 and you compete as an amateur you compete at 50 or 60 60 right 60 yeah also yeah. oh, you actually have to eat I'm actually, no, I'm actually safe because <laughs> it's between 56.9 to 59.9 so I'm, technically I'm just safe yeah so now in, the, now in the pros you're fighting at super featherweight right yeah which is 58.9 that will be the same as me and Hamza Ooh, mm-hmm. spicy! <laughs> but you know, I was uh, planning to move up weight. You know, uh, already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well, here's here's the thing, right? Uh, we've had a lot of boxers uh, on the podcast, but you are actually the first boxer who has actually fought him, right? Yeah, yeah. We we fought in the amateurs. So no one else has fought. Redone before mm. no one else that has been on the podcast yeah, no, yeah, no, no. Oh, yeah I think yeah I'm so so when was okay, okay, okay. this is quite exciting <laughs> <laughs> so so when was this when did you guys fight I think this was 2012 really? no no in 2000 yeah no, no wait, sorry it's 2013 seven years ago wow must be quite I significant I remember there's an Instagram post <laughs> dedicated to this moment <laughs> okay, so it, it was it was uh, it was at our own KBS. Uh, yeah, it was the nationals. I think it was the yeah, nationals. Yeah, the nationals. Then we met in the finals. Yeah. Uh, it was at the sixty kilograms, right? Yeah. Sixty kilograms, <laughs> and he had his own coach and following, and I had mine <laughs> apparently. So I think it was quite it was quite a hyped up fight. I think to some extent. To be honest, um, I didn't expect us to be in because usually the heavier categories are like the final fights. The, so, the main event yeah, the so called main, main event, event of the tournament yeah but when i saw the the bout list i was like oh i'm i'm the last event with redon i'm like okay then i, w- I went to coach kade as coach uh are you sure this is correct he's like yeah good luck i was like okay <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait 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 do you guys know each other before then uh, no i mean uh, i, I know he exists <laughs> but I, I, we are not like high by i think we i, yeah. I think there was a few high buys but we, we were not like sitting down having yeah. prata or something you guys yeah. were not training with each other no, or no, anything no, no, like no. that okay so for for you when you find out that you're gonna fight him yeah at that point of time what were you thinking i mean like do you do I you mean, know who he was Yeah, I think I know. I, I definitely know who he was because the uh, first time when I was fighting, on the first few times before when I was fighting in Farrah Park, um, I don't really know him. But when I saw him walk towards my corner, because I think he was going to, t- he was talking to some of my friends or my seniors. Um, that's the first time I ever saw him, and I knew that he looked really good and strong, which <laughs> I predicted. <laughs> did you start with? Did you start boxing at KBS? No, actually, I started boxing at yeah, um, this gym. We closed down. Years ago, yes. Uh, fight it's works, is it? Yeah, fight works. Oh. And is this guy Kadir is really okay, the tall Kadir. Yeah. yeah. So I think he went up to him. You talked to him, or was it the other way around? Okay, and okay. I saw you walking, and I was like, "This guy looks really good." So, but you've never seen him fight before. I've never seen him fight before. But I don't know. Somehow, I just look at him walk. I could tell he's good. I'm like, okay. Yeah, I, I guess when you walk, maybe can tell her. But when you run, dude, it's. 
Oh. What, what do you mean you run? Sure. You, you don't even it? run. How do you know I'm running? <laughs> I've seen you run. You, you look like a up. duck. <laughs> yeah. So so what happened during the fight? Come on, tell me, tell me. What happened? Yeah. We, we fought. They said you know we threw punches and I was like, who won? Oh, yeah, <laughs> the funny thing, the crowd. They, I mean, I, I wasn't expecting the, all of the crowd to support me. Of course, as much as I want to. I mean, surprisingly, he's got he's got his own bunch of people that so want, jealous, really ah? wanted him to win. You jealous? Ah? Actually, lead up to the fight, I heard some things like, "Oh, Tyson's really going to knock you out" or something like that. <laughs> really to, which is good. I mean, it gives me the motivation also to like you know stand my ground. But then I discovered during the fight, he gave me a bit of a. A tricky time A bit uh. Yeah a bit, uh, a bit. <laughs> But uh, you know Experience shows oh, <laughs> He's just trying to say He's old <laughs> <laughs> Yeah so It was a good It was a good fight uh. you know, it was good, but He kept coming forward And every time he The punches land the, the crowd was shouting So I was worried That the judges Might like see it differently yeah. But uh, I knew I had it under control In sort of a way So it wasn't a knockout Or anything It was a decision It wasn't just a decision, decision. Right So he actually was one of the first guys to unite all the Ridwan haters, ah? Uh, <laughs> don't know what media. Yeah. <laughs> because they finally had somebody to support <laughs> who could beat you, ah. Right? Well, at that time, I was quite, uh, I was quite neutral. At that time, I was on almost everybody's good books. Yeah, but not now. Uh, not now. <laughs> <laughs> no, with this podcast. <laughs> yeah, you know, when you are doing good, people want you to do good, but not just not better than them. That's just how life is. Yeah, but it's right it's now. kind of a there's no one else that's as good yeah, as you right no, but now. I think we've moved on then I moved on to the pros eventually he yeah, stayed in the amateurs for a bit uh, I follow his career I think he's fought a good fight in Taiwan I think is it Taiwan in Hong Kong Hong Kong yeah he was he was winning this Australian guy right. I was watching the fight live streaming and then uh, he, I think he dislocated his shoulder Ooh, yeah right or left the left one what happened um, so I think I was pressuring him as usual and I went forward with my left hook. His body sort of came forward too. So it connect, connected together and our, uh, no, sorry, and my shoulder just gave way. It popped out. It popped out. And immediately when I knew it, I was like, shit. Because I, I guess I felt the feeling like four times, four or five times. This is probably the seven or the six time. That it popped out? Yeah. Oh, it has happened before. Yeah. So it happened before, is in yeah. like before the, the fight. Yeah, it happened like before many years ago. Okay. So it's a reoccurring injury and yeah, when which, I felt that pain, I mean, I knew I couldn't continue anymore. Which round was this? It was the last round. Oh. Yeah, it was really, it was yeah. really bad. What Did it ever occur to you like, okay, maybe I can hang on? I would have, but the thing is that I don't want to jeopardize my arm. It's right. Because I know that- It's long term. Yeah, in the future, I still want to fight and I don't want, you know, this injury to, to you know, prolong and all that so how do you i mean as a fighter inside the ring i mean these things happen right uh yeah. but who how do you decide okay first of all what's what's the feeling like do you guys is it is it a lot of adrenaline where you don't really feel the pain but you just know what's happening like you know your shoulder pop but the pain is not there yet or does the pain come immediately even though you, like you have all this adrenaline actually that's a different type of that's a different for different injuries it's a different pain like the one where I fought recently for the, my pro fight there's this cut I didn't really actually feel it because it was just a cut and right. just bleeding I was like okay with it but to be honest I think the dislocation part is somewhat worse right. because the nerves the muscles everything is just hitting the bone is just hitting the nerves and the muscle so it's really hurting there's right. no point I, there's no chance there's no way I'm going to continue what about I, you what was the worst pain you've had in the ring other than getting your ass beaten up by a bunda <laughs> <laughs> no no nothing hurts nothing that bad nothing that bad no injury no nothing no. I know you sleep a lot sleep yeah you sleep in the yeah, ring I don't know yeah. why though I have no idea why I keep sleeping. Shaky legs, bro. I think it's just the. Uh, <laughs> if if Malay say luto longa, bro. Longa, bro. Kuda kuda tak kuat. Then after, <laughs> <laughs> so after the fight, you had a bit of a rest. Then I think the highlight was the nationals, right? So he fought. So for those who don't know, he fought Solihin. I think in the finals. Yeah. So Solihin started boxing the same time as me. He was like the golden boy of our era, and. Uh, it was a. Uh, I knew it was. <laughs> Wait, you are the golden boy no, of no, no, era. No, honestly, it was uh, Solin. When okay. we started at the same time, he had a fighting style that is beautiful to watch. 
And he's, he's got the technical boxing style And I was just the kind of guy Who's just going forward And we had no ring At that point of time So we were training At an open space So you imagine like The size of two basketball courts So I would be like Going from one end To the other end Of the basketball court Because if we have no ring And Solly is the kind of boxer Who fights from the outside So it's convenient to, For him to go backwards right. And I'm just going forward In my head like dung, dung, dung. <laughs> so, well, It took a while for me To get used to that style But once I get the hang of it I think it works So, but it was difficult for Solhin because once he got into the ring, he has no place to run. But he was one of the good guys in that team, and I think he started one week before me. Boxing. Yeah, boxing. Then we went uh, to nationals together, a few international tournaments together, and I think now we are friends. And then he had to fight Tyson in the nationals. Which and was when was this? This was last year, right? Yeah, uh, last last year. Last last year. No, no last 2019 year. 2019 or 2018. You have to remember this because. Yeah, I want to remember it because <laughs> because he's watching it, so yeah, it's best not to not talk about it. <laughs> you know, he won't be like tuning me in. Uh, but I think it's last year, and I fought him one more time. Just like another time, I fought him is like two years ago, three, three years ago. Okay. Yeah, it was in Farrah Park before he got demolished. So I lost to him. Right. Yeah. So, but but what happened last year? So you won. Yeah, I won him. You won. Then what happened after? And that? then what happened after that? You called somebody into the ring, <laughs> and oh, then oh, so, oh, 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 yeah, someone's got to be in trouble. <laughs> oh, I thought I thought okay, this whole so thing was about you, to fight. So yeah. you won Solhin in the rematch. Yeah. Okay, then you called your girlfriend back then to come up to the ring. Yeah. And you, did you, <laughs> how long how long did it take for you to plan to plan that? <laughs> and then you surrendered your life. <laughs> no, yeah, I, actually, I didn't really. Yeah, actually, I kind of planned it like a week before. Mm. I told myself like um. You know, if I don't win, you know, I can't. I can't do it. So <laughs> I, I had to win that fight, and as 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 uh, as bad as I feel, you know, f- really hitting Solin that hard because he's my friend. We train together, yeah. but I knew, I told myself I had to do it because I really wanted to put the ring on her. <laughs> wow. So I'm like, yeah. After that, I caught her in, gave her a little surprise, I did a little speech, and then I went down on my knees. So she did. Oh uh, no, sorry, uh, <laughs> in front of her, and you know. Which was more scary, the fight or the proposal? I think the proposal, because it was in front of everyone, and that's something I never did before. Wait, she said yes, right? Yeah. I mean, I wasn't there, but uh, yeah, she definitely. What said if yes. you lost that 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 fight? Would you have still proposed or not? I would have proposed, but probably not in the ring, like somewhere else. Or somewhere else. What's oh. what's what's her name? Sorry, what's her name? Uh, Isra. Isra, uh, it's not that he did not remember. He's just nervous because you know got cameras and everything. So forgive <laughs> him. Give easy. him, give him a pass, easy. please. <laughs> All right. Uh, so let's let's get back to. Yeah, that's, wait, that's one. <laughs> wait, one. So wait, what? There's more. That. There's more. So then, thank God she said yes. Wait, if she wait. said no, how? Oh yeah. What uh, if she said no? Wow. Um. But he's quite a confident guy, lah. Like, he do you plan for that. Do you plan for that? Well, I didn't really plan because I know she would say yes. Wow, <laughs> so boxer's confidence, confident. Yeah. So you don't have. What, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> you see like one, see like standard. Oh, see like different, see, see like, like no confident one. See like money only. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. <laughs> let's let's go back right from the start now. How how do you how do you find boxing? Why boxing? Why? Mm. Um, okay, to be honest, right, when I was young, um, I kind of like to fight outside in school and all that. Oh, gangster, ah. Huh? No, <laughs> like yeah, I mean because you know, I, probably just the way I am. I just like do, like some hand action. And the all Tyson that. life chose him, bro. <laughs> yeah, but um, I figured like I want to do this. Actually, I want to fight legally. So, a fly. I just happened a fly came by my house. There's this advertisement about boxing, and mm. I took up the offer. And I just from there, I just started on my career. That was back in 2011. When I was in, still at Fight Works for like a year plus until it closed down. Did you stop fighting outside once you? Yeah, I did, because um I didn't really want to get into trouble. Right. Yeah, because I'm. Been told by my parents and all my other relatives that you know if you once you get into jail, or you have a bad record in for on yourself, it's gonna look bad on you when you go out and find work. But also, does it help that you are actually channeling the energy into proper training, and you don't really, you can't be bothered with things outside anymore after that? That's true. That's the whole point of boxing. I mean, until I found boxing, I found Coach Kadir. You know, gives me something to think about. You know, to channel my energy to something useful, 
and make it good in the future. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How important was Coach Kari in your development as a person and as a boxer? Because I think you are pretty close to him together with some other boys. But I think you and him are a special kind of close. I think. I've to be honest, I've never felt this close with Coach. Like um, the moment I stepped in KBS, like Coach is always there for me. Like every time when I train, I spar, he'll be there to watch me, and I feel like there's something that he wants me to be, but. In the end, like I couldn't because it's just about it's just something about the training. I'm mean, not his training. It's just something about our training in Singapore that doesn't allow us to like um I train every day, but when we go out to um fight with the international tournament, it's different because the people over there they do it full time. At first, we only do it part time. So as much as we train, we still can never be. As good as those people overseas. So, what do you think needs to change? I think we need some sort of um, funding just to help us. Like to be honest, I need someone. I mean, we need someone to recognize us, like as mm. a as a sport. That even though we're small, there's still some mini talent, minor talents out there that could be groomed. But I don't, I don't know. The government just probably doesn't see it. Well, I I mean, with with. Me and one have talked uh, about this at length on how we think that uh, firstly there needs to be a reorganization. Yeah. That the structure is not there, mm. so the structure needs to be there. Yeah. Uh, mm. And I think the old boys, when I say old boys, I mean like everybody who has kind of benefited or has contributed to the boxing world in Singapore should come together and probably put their minds together to help work this out, mm. because right now the structure is not allowing the You no, know, the generation after you guys yep. to grow because no one even knows boxing. No one even thinks about boxing beyond a recreational sense. You guys both work at gyms. You own a gym, right? Yep. Yeah. How many people who actually walked in, who walk in here, are young people with potential to do something in the boxing world? I'm pretty sure there's one or two, right? But With proper structure, there might be a chance that there's more. Yeah, definitely, I think so, for sure. I think now, right now, is like like we said before, it's shaky. There's no there's no clear path for where they should go, mm. so they can't really have a proper start. And I think it all comes down to the association. And like you said, we can train as hard as we can, but it takes us a lot. It takes a lot of luck for us to win that level. They are basically pros, but just fighting the amateur scene. Because they have trained full time, they get they are paid, they they get food, their families are covered, so they train with no worries. So I mean, I'm not expecting that for the for the boxers now, but at least a structure, a proper training program, proper building, a proper calendar of events, uh, no cancellation last minute or training for or don't know what. That's the next thing you know, you're going see games. Like, what the hell? So I think I think there needs to be a. Like a progressive plan for the boxers. How come you didn't go for the last C games? From what I heard, um, I think they were cutting costs, so they kind of took me out because I I didn't I, I think the last international fight I didn't want I didn't win anything back, I didn't win any medals back, so they took that into consideration, and I, I guess I wasn't selected for that. Who 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 decided not to select? Yeah. I think it's a sports council it's because sp- coach was trying his best to push me for that sea games, but somehow it didn't work out. So, in a way, I felt like it's probably a blessing too. Because I don't know. Because like, if I would to, the whole point of me going for the sea games for the last sea games was I want I wanted the temporal after that. So, I think it was a blessing. Because if I should I just to keep my arm again, mm. I think it's gonna be uh, even as it's gonna be bad for me to go pro because. Of the injury, it's gonna give. It's gonna be worse. So I was, for me, I feel like it's kind of like a blessing, even though I wanted to go for it so bad. So, so turning pro has always been a goal, or is it something that you actually it it, it was <laughs> since ever since I started boxing, I would, that's what I wanted to do. But um, I think back when we when I fought him that time, I think the pro scene wasn't wasn't there yet. Mm. Like it wasn't. It's just amateurs. So now. You know, with the help of um, Willip and the other promoters, it's slowly climbing the ranks. Yeah, we got there. a lot of pro boxers now, don't we? I think we got yeah. pretty pretty decent number. I think 
I think we are Yeah But now the the Those who turn pro Are those who got like It feels like those who got No more choice in the amateurs <laughs> So we need to get the pros Who are In the pros Because they want to Not because ah, uh, There's nothing left in the amateurs Or Right like, I'm not good enough in the amateurs So I turn pro So but to me right Someone from the outside right, It seems I've always thought That pro boxing Is just One step Towards becoming a pro Is it not like that? No one wants to be a amateur boxer forever, no, unless yeah, f- I think, I think unless you're if, you're Leona. I think it's not <laughs> wrong to be. I think it's not wrong to just be in the amateur scene. I mean, we have Hanudin. He's represented Singapore a lot of times. He's been offered to fight in the pros, but he wants to stay away from the boxing politics and all that. And his goal is always the Olympic gold. The Olympic gold medal, I would say, I will never reach it. And it, to have the Olympic gold medal is better than any world title because you can't. You cannot go through any shortcuts. If you, they put you to face the champion, you have to face the champion. You can't select your opponents. Mm. So I think he takes pride in that, which is a uh, respect, which, which I truly respect. I think that's a, uh, I think there's something that's that's a great goal. Uh. It's very very hard to reach because you need to go through the qualifiers, the Asian qualifiers. Really, you have like Kazakhstan, you have like Japan, you have like uh, Thailand, Philippines, even all this all the Southeast Asian countries are strong itself. Right. And, and when we talk about Asia, we have a lot more, and it is crazy difficult. You imagine fighting Gennady Golovkin in the amateurs? <laughs> yeah, so that is quite crazy. Is that why you won bronze three times at the Sea Games? That is why I quit lah. <laughs> 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 I mean, I have my own reasons, but that's for another day. But so you eventually turn pro, and I told you before, you know, one one of our sparring sessions, I said, you know, in the pro, it will be different. I didn't explain much because it's very hard to explain in words. I don't know if whether you can. Do you can you put it into words? Why is amateur and pro different? Well, firstly, the cards, the bruises, the whatever. Well, for me, for me, from what I feel, amateur is actually more on volume of punches, whereas pro is more like a slow pace. So for me, so my own opinion, like amateur is more for um, the more punches you show, the more points you get. Well, mm. as for a professional, to me, it's more like um, more of clean shots. Mm-hmm. So that's why people really take their time to you know do all the timing and you know the counters and all that. And so when I when I first when I the first every time when I sparred him ten rounds, I was actually going amateur pace. I was like, wow, this is actually different. So you're going fast. I was going fast, and he was as usual. He was just pacing me, starting until, slow, starting slow until the fifth round. He got me a few body shots, and and I thought I could. Keep going. I was like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> you got no, you got nothing I, left I, in the tank. Yeah, I got nothing left. And until you got me with two body shots, and I almost went down. <laughs> yeah, my yeah. my strategy. Can you stop bullying people? No, I mean my strategy to inspiring him was to, of course, for me because I need to, I need to prepare for a fight at the point of time. But in my head, I was also trying to prepare him in such a way where. Uh, the pacing the pacing of a fight because he wants to spar 10 rounds I said well, he asked me how many rounds I said up to you <laughs> and he chose 10 rounds which I was quite surprised he did because I, had, I must have didn't spar 10 rounds until that point of time I think since that fight that was my first sparring since my last fight so I said okay so the first few rounds he wanted to go fast so I had to slow him down like throwing shots to the body uh, turning him making him feel uncomfortable then he wants to slow down after one he wants to slow down that's where I increase the pace and make him work when he don't want to <laughs> and then uh, when he wants to rest, I just don't let him rest. When he wants to work, I po- I force him to rest. So I, okay. I think that disrupted his rhythm and all of that. Yeah. I think I find this I find this quite uh, amusing because uh, the boxing the pro boxing scene in Singapore is quite small, right? Mm. Uh, I know for a fact that you go around sparring people, mm. and you know you you spar people your the same size as you sometimes sometimes a bit heavier sometimes lighter so when when you guys meet okay for instance the two of you right uh he comes to you and he asks you like hey can we spar and stuff like that right well, what do you ask in return sure it, so so <laughs> i mean what what do you guys usually, how does it like how does it like usually okay usually I'll, if i want to spar him i'll ask him hey are you free to do some rounds next week and then he and once he gives me answer which I know he will and because he he wants he needs some sparring too and we just fix the date and he just come yeah, over. Just like asking, yeah, just asking asking a girl out for a date. You want to catch a movie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Oh, um, I gotta be home by certain certain time. Same sparring. Hey, you want to spar? I don't okay. know, but but okay, but but I have to be busy. We need this time because I got work after that. Yeah. Okay, we change the time. 
we'll okay, see. but when when you guys finally get to spa, right? Like, yeah. do you like okay? I'm gonna beat this guy up, or they like, <laughs> is it like proper like you tell him like, hey, okay, today I'm actually working on this. No, I think the goal is not to tell what you're working on. Okay. You have to try to work on whatever that you want to work on without telling the other person. Because if you're telling the other person, the person will subconsciously be thinking about it and it doesn't feel so natural. Because let's say I say, okay, I wanted to work on my hook. He is obviously going to defend <laughs> my hook. So I got to like disguise whatever yeah. like I want to try and do. Yeah. That's the point aspiring to not show what you're going to do. Just to just do to just do it on a person, you know, what you learn on the backs or on the pads. You're just doing sparring, but when you guys spar, you guys go full on. Um, yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, <laughs> that, that's the whole point of sparring. Yeah, me, yeah. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> me, it depends. It depends. Like I want to work on certain things because not everybody is like my level, my skill level. Some people are better than me. Some people are not not as experienced as me. Humble are you? Yeah, humble. <laughs> what happened to the boxer's it, it confidence? Depends, <laughs> it depends on what I want to work on. Because I think if you spar, it, the point is you just want to beat people up. Nobody will want to spar you after that and you don't learn anything. If you are winning every time in sparring, there's no point. Uh, this is not a fight. And I think some boxers take pride in saying, oh, I knocked this guy down in sparring. I, I don't give a shit. It doesn't mean anything. Because sometimes I throw like, I purposely throw three punches only in the round because I want to work on footwork or I want to work on like a, a mental, my mental conditioning for a fight or a certain punch, certain strategy. Because I can, if, I, if I say I want to fight a certain opponent, He possibly cannot be exactly as my opponent. He might have like a punch or a certain movement that is similar to that opponent. So I'm going to make him throw that move or, or that punch that I want him to throw that mimics my opponent. Then I just work around that. Right, right. Okay, I think I think this is also uh, a positive point about Singapore boxers in general. Mm-hmm. I think you guys genuinely help each other out yeah we do when, help each other out yes. when, when it comes to this kind of things because I've heard I've, I mean from following you I know you you spar around quite a lot mm-hmm. you know because mm, you just like being around yeah and I, I do need people to help me spar it's just it's not just that I help people I think people are genuinely wanting to help me spar which also helps in my development it's not just me even I get my boxes to go to different gyms if other gyms want to come down to legends and spar I say why not If we can work on, if all the gyms can work together on that, why can't we work together on getting this amateur thing right? I think it, it, it <laughs> involves money. <laughs> probably it involves money. It involves the, our head person, Mr. Coach Kade. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's a bit tricky, lah. We come to that part. Right. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's hard to talk to him. I know. Oh, he said it. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I tried it before, but I know once his mind is set on something, he he won't, he won't change it. So Do you have any idea what is his plan like? I have never. I've no. All I know that whatever he does, um, I mean whatever he plans for the boxing is all kept to himself. Yeah, he doesn't. Want, yeah, he doesn't want to share it with anyone. Yeah, I think that's 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 the root of the problem. Yeah, uh, I think because he will always just train. Trust me, I think he will always usually say that. Yeah, I mean for me, for me personally, the reason why he does that is because. I, I think he doesn't trust anyone mm-hmm. for that point in time. He doesn't trust anyone yet to actually share what he really wants to do. Because from my experience or what I heard, uh, there's a lot of, um, I'm not going to say names, but, uh, who, but I'm, I'm not sure who, but um, there's a lot of people that I know of that are trying to actually bring him down. Mm. So, we don't. that's re- <laughs> I don't know, but that's but that's the reason why he doesn't trust anyone yet because he knows that if he gives this is he gives this uh thing to someone and then suddenly he just he make use of it, he'll just like you know over out out do coach career, out do coach himself and. I I have uh I've talked to a few people after we re- we we talk about the state of Singapore amateur boxing, mm-hmm. and you know. Uh, overall, I just want to make this this clear to everybody who listens. And by the way, we have like around two hundred and fifty listeners, not just five. Well, so we, we upgraded. C- uh. We upgraded <laughs> like to two hundred and fifty. So thanks, guys, for listening. But those of you who always listen and have listened to that Singapore amateur boxing uh episode, I want to make one thing clear. This is my point of view, right? Everybody that I've talked to individually in boxing in Singapore has nothing bad personally to say about Coach Kari. Mm. 
he's one of the whoever that I talk to amateur boxers pro boxers coach Kadi has always been kind mm-hmm. and kind of a positive influence like that I mean I mean look look what Tyson yep. just shared right I mean he's he, you're very close to him and it seems like he has very positive effects on you uh so p- on a personal level I don't think he is a bad person I think he's actually quite a good person he's somebody actually once told me that coach Kadi is the kind of person who will sacrifice himself to help you Yep. That's the kind of person he is. Yep. He will teach you or he will give you all the advice that you need to know even though it's beyond him. You know, yep. he tries his best to to make you happy or to make you a better person and stuff like that. That's not his criticism. That's not my criticism of him. Yeah, I understand. But my criticism of him is is just like what you guys brought up. He keeps things to himself. But Singapore amateur boxing does not belong to him. Singapore amateur boxing, the sport, does not belong to him. So if somebody like him who is hating the sport is kind of keeping things only to himself and not being professional and opening up and and having proper structure and stuff like that, mm-hmm. then he is also kind of the reason why the sport is being held back. Yeah, maybe. But I think at some point of time, we need to get him like to say out oh, what does he expect to see. Like, things that are realistic. What does what does he expect like gym owners or the boxing, the the boxing figures in Singapore to come up, to to come forward and do for them, for him to make a change. I think he has a plan, but he needs to voice it out so people can take action. Then after that, then it's up to him lah whether he wants to pass the torch on or not. But he needs to, to voice it out. Because I think a lot of people are willing to do it. But they are just not sure what is required. Mm. And a lot, and most people are actually afraid to talk to him because <laughs> he's just next. <laughs> he what? He next? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I heard his defense is quite good, lah, from yeah. uh, from previous episodes. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I guess nagging is also. A but while we are at it, I think I have to say this story. Not a story, but I remember it was I think my second year or third year boxing. Then me and Solin, we were that time we were not boxing is not recognized as a national sport. I mean, not recognized by Sport Singapore back then. So me and Solin got uh to a plane and went for a fight in Goa, India. So that was an expensive trip. I had I didn't pay anything. <laughs> Solin didn't pay anything. And Coach Kade took out money from his own savings, retirement savings, and his wife didn't know about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so now she knows. Yeah. So she always every time I say she's the lady at the front desk at Sport Singapore. So if you go in, you see a machi to dong that's her. Mm, yeah. So she will always say, "Ah, coach Kadi and her, he's boxing her. Ah, for last time until now, ah, never stop, bro. And for last time until now, always boxing, boxing, boxing. The boys, the boys, the ah, yeah, he forget about me all. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that is really a huge sacrifice, ah. And while he next at us, somebody else is nagging at him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then he spent his retirement money on us to go to India. And we lost the freaking fight <laughs> in the first in the first round. Yeah, the first round I lost. Yeah. <laughs> I lost to I lost to Kyrgyzstan. Solihin <laughs> lost to Sri Lanka. So that was our first. That was our first tournament where we see international standard. We see Kazakhstan. We see all these countries, and we were like, "Wow, we are so way behind." Yeah, so that was a that was a that was a good one, lah. Coach Kari belanja us to go India <laughs> <laughs> with his retirement. Yeah, fund. you're not even his son. <laughs> yeah, it was a, it was a, it was an experience, man. And he also sacrificed a lot for his son. His son was also boxing at that point of time, and mm. for some reason, I think I think I might be wrong, but at some point of time, his son wasn't selected by Singapore because he didn't like like Tyson. He he didn't get to win international tournaments because he happened to face the the champions in the first round, so he had he lost. And the council didn't see it in that point of way, in that view. So they said that he didn't win any medals, so he's not going to go to the Sea Games. And his son was super sad, so mm. he took out money again for his own savings. <laughs> I, he seems to have deep savings. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and he sent him to train and train in Ireland, I think. Yeah. So I think if Conor McGregor, no, <laughs> Conor McGregor was probably the <laughs> carrying the pill or something. <laughs> So Coach Kadi is a special kind of man. Lah. He mm. is... Yeah, he's special. Lah. He's different. Lah. Different kind of special. Lah. Very hard to say. <laughs> what about you? What's your favorite story of Coach Kadi? Since we are on the topic of Coach Kadi. 
Oh, there's no favorite story over here. I mean, all he did was just to support us as boxers, using his own money and all that. But um, I would say, uh, I mean, we 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 couldn't find any more like a dedicated coach like him. Yep. It's only that his age is catching up, but yeah. it's, it's a bit hard to talk him into it now because his age is the more he, his age catches up, the more he doesn't want to listen. And then now, but now it's my turn to to nag him also because he's got. <laughs> I think he's got. Uh, Why yeah, are he, you? He cannot be taking sweet drinks because I think he's got that condition. Is it diabetes? But diabetes, something yeah. low. Ah, uh, diabetes. So that time he's he will sneak in a coke drink, you know. <laughs> <laughs> then I was like, good. He's he's just he's just like a radio gone gone crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what he's talking about. <laughs> so we will neck at him on these little little things. Uh. He's very ticklish. You poke him a bit, so you fake him, so you like. Ee, ee, ee. <laughs> okay, I think we got enough for yeah. Coach Gandhi. Maybe we should get him on a podcast yeah, and give him a, a coke <laughs> and see see what happens to him. Uh, speaking of coaching, uh, Tyson, you are also a coach now. Yeah. Uh, and you are a coach at where? Uh, USC Gym Singapore. Now, uh, UFC Gym Singapore, that's very interesting. It's a MMA gym. Yeah, How do yeah. you get a gig there? To be honest, right, I, I think it was just luck again because I sent in my resume at the last day and there were like 15 to 16 applicants before me. And somehow, <laughs> the manager just got back to me the next day and uh, I went for an interview and, you know, after after a week later, I got it. <laughs> How how does the how does the gym work? Um, uh, it's like a normal regular MMA gym. So when you come in, you pay for the membership. You can do all sorts of classes. We have a gym, like a gym gym thing. Uh, gym gym equipment you can use. <laughs> gym gym. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, that's about it. You just pay, use, and go back. And and there are different like martial arts classes. I would say. Yeah, there's wrestling, Muay Thai, boxing, BJJ, um, yoga. We used to have Pilates, but I think it's cancelled out now. Right. And th- is there a lot of uh, people taking up boxing? Yeah, there's quite a number of them. Um, mostly are from Venda because it closed. Right. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it, it's true, it closed. Another. <laughs> it's it's yeah. a good venue. Where is it at again? Uh, it's at Link. Yeah, to be Link. honest, it's a bit out of the way because some people actually, they don't really know where is it because it's like, it's only the underpass. It's in, it's in the underpass. So only if you walk through the underpass you get to see it if not you you, you can't find it anywhere right but it's very yeah. accessible though it's like on the way to Suntec City yeah Millennium Walk so so do, do you do you get to train uh, you know is there a variety of people who come for boxing class or is it mostly boxer boxers oh there's different variety of people that come to my class some from the BDJ some from Muay Thai they come just to try boxing but um, there are certain type of people a certain amount of people that only who wants to do boxing so they the two just come to my class and you know and you give them pet works and uh, you have sparring class and all that so now you work around a lot of different martial arts right yeah. what's the one thing in common that all martial arts have <laughs> I don't know we sweat maybe <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the, oh, the common thing uh, it's physical so right. it's, it's it's physical and mentally challenge, challenging for because I've tried BJJ once I've tried Muay Thai and to be honest it's it's way different from what from what is boxing because unlike uh, boxing BJJ has a lot of technique technical you gotta roll around you gotta do a lot of submission and one submission itself is like 10 techniques <laughs> so <laughs> I think I I think I was just I did one class and I'm like okay I think I'm done I'm good <laughs> <laughs> I'll just stick to boxing <laughs> yeah I tried to I tried to uh, spar with one of the, one of the uh, blue belts so I got my ass kicked though so is there any shit talking between the martial arts like to uh, like BJ people like fuck boxing man like, it's a meet you <laughs> <laughs> or like Muay Thai people are, I just kick your leg la, you know? I mean, like have those, a lot of that But it's more for a joke It's I like mean, those people I meet yeah. la, Like Hey why are you doing boxing now No lah I injured my hand I injured my leg So I cannot do jujitsu So now I do boxing yeah, Like yeah, wow, yeah. wow Because you cannot do other things You do boxing <laughs> oh, Defensive boxing, Defensive yeah. <laughs> What yeah, I think what boxing Last resort la, yeah. It yeah, is what always, Boxing just use hand what? No way uh, No <laughs> Boxing is legs first Until, yeah, until they try the foot And they're like Oh yeah. I think I'll just go back to be <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody goes to a boxing gym and they, if you ask them what's the first important thing in boxing, if they say other things other than legs, then you should change the gym. Because legs is the most important thing in boxing. 
Especially oh, yeah. for Muay Thai, I mean, even if they know the combination jab, cross, hook, uppercut, but when you come to a boxing class and we when you and we do footwork drills to them, they're totally amateurs. They're like really, it's like new to them. Right. And it's really funny to watch them actually. <laughs> <laughs> Has coaching helped you uh, in fighting? Uh, no, it's actually... <laughs> 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 yeah, it doesn't really help me in fighting. It just helps me be a better coach. Now I know how Coach Kali feels. Because, <laughs> 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 you know, I had so much... When I when I sent my first uh, students for a fight, it's, it's a lot of things I, I, I didn't know what to do. Like It's like, now I know how a corner man feels like. Like yeah, you know, you give him water. You gotta tell him, you gotta tell him um, what to do. Combinations. You gotta show this, show that. You know, it's, it's really stressful for me. And then when he loses, and you know, I kind of feel it. <laughs> Sad. Um, yeah. I'm it's like, passion, bro. It's passion. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? Does does coaching make you a better fighter? Uh, I wouldn't say it helped me to be a better fighter, but it helped me in sort of a way where. For me to truly understand the art of boxing, right, I need to be able to <laughs> explain it properly. <laughs> so when I am able to explain it to my students, how to do a certain technique or move or whatever, it sort of also tells me that I understand how it's supposed to be executed. And also, I it registers in my head how it's supposed to be done. So let's say I'm fighting a short guy. Okay? So people might realize that for the two months, all the techniques, strategies, all is like, to fight short people. Oh, you mean for your classes? Yeah, for my classes. <laughs> so they will be. So it's it's a way that I'm telling them what needs to be done. It's also a way of me telling myself what should be. But that's should, not fair, bro. It's okay, what they let they get to experience fighting different people <laughs> without being punched in the face. But they don't know. <laughs> now they know. <laughs> yeah, but in a way, I think. Okay, let's say I say okay, this is how you throw the jab to the body. I need to be able to explain it to them so that I can apply it to myself. So then I can think. Some people don't understand what I'm trying to say. So when I get, I bring myself to the level where, okay, what part of it you don't understand? Then I will see. Okay, maybe different people do it differently. Then I will try to adjust uh, according to their strength or weaknesses or how they understand a certain some a certain instruction that I have for them. Mm, mm, mm. Interesting. For Interesting. me, la, That's for me. So your next fight is going to be your second professional fight, right? Yeah. Uh, what's the long term goal here? In in the pros, what's what mm. what do you want to achieve before before um, you hang up your gloves? Probably the best thing that ever happened to me was uh, is probably gonna be a title fight. Yeah, I probably just one belt, maybe two, and then I'll probably hang the belts and the glove <laughs> together <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, but why 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 so? Like, uh, you know, people do it do it for different reasons, right? Uh, legacy or mm. whatever What what's what's your end goal is it just solely to get the belt actually no the, the whole the whole reason is just because I just I just like the sport like I don't I don't really have to fight but I, I mean I don't really have to get the belt but I just want to fight I just want to keep on fighting you know? I just want to see how far I can go and how many more years do you intend to fight yeah until I'm 39 and <laughs> you are how old are you now I'm 28 So young. Wait till you wait till you listen. Who's the main guy in his corner? Who's the main guy in your corner? Oh, Solihin. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, I have another one. He's uh, he's also one of my seniors, uh, Zach. But he's he's just in and out. Oh, he's still, in. he's still in the scene. Yeah, no, and then he's just cornering me, but okay, yeah, okay. once in a while. Yeah. I mean, we ask him to come back and fight, but he doesn't want to because he's a family man now. Yeah. Right. I'm. I'm. Well, for some people, once you have family, it's a bit different. Mm-hmm. But you know, yeah. for Ridwan, it's <laughs> <laughs> let's let's go on. <laughs> let's put it all he on becomes, the line. <laughs> he becomes more braver after having a family. Oh, Mickey told me otherwise. Man. He told me uh, once you get married, life is going to be different for me because you got to commit 50% to your wife, 50% to boxing, and, oh, yeah. and the other 50 to work. Well, well, you should ask the person who has actually been <laughs> married for some time now. I think, I think it depends on how bad you want it, lah. Like for me, I would rather sacrifice sleep or my own time doing my own things. So I would try to. That's why. That's why I freaking run at 4 a.m. so that <laughs> I can be done. out of the house. I can, be, I can be done with my stuff. So by the time I come back, nobody. Even, sometimes they don't even know that I'm gone. So when they are done, when they are off doing their things, I am back in the gym working or training. And then when I'm back at home, it's like they didn't know like I was away training. That's why people are always asking me, 
Are you, do you even train? When are you starting, starting your training camp? But I already started like two months ago. You just don't know. You just don't see. You just see me posting on social media that like I'm <laughs> having fun. But you only see what I choose to show you. And what you don't choose to <laughs> 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 Okay, it's a joke. Uh, <laughs> all right. So you've, you've been probably training for the fight, right? And then yeah. now with the cancellation and stuff like that, how are you, how you going to pace yourself towards the next the next date? Which is in June. I uh, just like probably train lesser now and probably eat a bit more and yeah <laughs> <laughs> until maybe three months before the fight and I'll start to increase my uh, training program. That's in March, which is next month, right? <laughs> Wait, I mean, three? if you say three oh, yeah. months before, then yeah. sorry, more two months. <laughs> so I, I need one more month to just really enjoy. Right. Because I think in April I'm going for my. Uh, Bachelor's party, so in the yacht. Yeah, is it in the yacht? No, it's in not in yacht. It's in the cruise. Wow, wow. Okay, okay. Yeah. better not be quarantined in a cruise. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm afraid because I'm afraid they would you know call off the cruise, you know, and call, or maybe quarantine us in the cruise and I can't come back. But you fight the bro, just fight lah. <laughs> So some things we can't fight, man. The virus. <laughs> but well, yeah, so I think when I'm back after the Bachelor's party, then I probably have to. Really kick up, step up my game for the training. Full do you on. see? Do you see? Oh, sorry, sorry. Full on, full on training after yeah, that. Full yeah, full on training. Okay, if, you know, like we have a few boxers. I mean, you have me. Then there's Hamza also around your weight yeah. class. Do you see yourself fighting him in the near future? You know, have I, you sparred him before? I, I, actually, I did spar him more, many years back. Oh, uh, yeah, but um, recently he actually texted me. He asked me if I want to spar, but I told him because of my work schedule, oh, okay, I couldn't. Okay. Yes, yeah, a bit hard. Same for his work schedule, so we couldn't make a time to spar. But she does a question I wanted to ask because a lot of people are asking, me, asking uh, Ridon, when is the time you and him are gonna fight? Wait, 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 well, yeah, actually, you know. um, actually, I w- what's going on behind the scenes? What are people talking about? Now they're just asking, like you know, with you and with you and Hamza on the same weight, and you know why. Actually, to be honest, I think the best fight that we can ever have is actually two locals fighting each other. Mmm, spicy. Yeah, like, 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 if you ask me, for example, in in terms of even women boxing, mm. we all would like to see Fash mm. fighting Shahida. Ooh, yeah. Tyson bringing some chili. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be a good fight. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, to be honest, there's no other good fights than locals fighting each other because the thing is that the crowd base is there and people know both of them. So it'd definitely be a good good crowd base, good fight, good yeah. entertainment. Everybody's sort of a champion your yeah, own that's way why when it comes out in the papers. So it's time yeah. to put it all yeah, on like, the line. Yeah, it's like, you know, two local boxers, local talents fighting each other. So, it, so you would like to see Ridwan fight Hamza? Yeah, I'm trying to hype it up. So. <laughs> wait, 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 okay, 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 <laughs> okay hype man. We didn't know there's a there's a third person in the one man show, but okay, okay. But I'm gonna ask you, who do you think is gonna win? Well, I uh, I can't <laughs> say. I can't say here, but you know. No, you can't say you you bring the heat. You have to answer with heat, bro. No, 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 no let's just keep it. So, <laughs> so the sparring. Are you scared? I'm not gonna answer. answer. No, I'll let, no, I'll let the I'll let the uh, results. You know, I'll let the results. Okay, but who tell. do you want to win? Uh, what? Who, who who do you think? Uh, will I'll win? text you the answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that you know no. It's, it's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Cause saying having hyped that up, I have people hyping me up. Mm. Asking Fine. me when I'm gonna fight Hamza or Rido. <laughs> oh, so yeah. okay. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, now right, he's no, bringing heat upon him own <laughs> his own self. No, I, this is what people are asking. I'm like, uh, yeah, good, no. No. yeah, because yeah, you know, with Hamza, so I think who do you want to fight first? So? Who do you want to fight Rido or Hamza first? Well, this is a good no. one, also. I, I have no. I mean, whoever wants <laughs> me first. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Hamza's Hamza's cor- currently holding on to a belt. So it's two belts, one. two belts. I'm not holding on to any belts. So is he, is oh. he holding on to two? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got the WBC oh. Asia 
And the I don't know what. But altogether, you've won four belts, right? I've won four, <laughs> which four is five. twice, four or five, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you don't have any belts now. No, no, no I don't. Now I don't hold because I don't defend them. I didn't defend them oh, because yeah. the promotion has crumbled, okay. as we all know. <laughs> he just wears them in the shower sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, boys watching. Sometimes uh, when he's, his pants are a bit too loose, he wears <laughs> them also. So all right, all right, okay. This is this is me being a journalist, right? Thinking, right? Uh, in my all-time top, uh, what 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 category is this? Super featherweight. Super featherweight Singapore rankings, right? Mm. Uh, pound for pound. Let's say pound for pound, right? The most... No pound for pound. La. Whatever. Number one ranking would be you. Because no, you've won me. the most... Yeah, you've, I think I you've got also the got the most track. fights also, right? Yep. Yeah. And that is Hamza, right? Yep. And that is Tyson, right? Mm-hmm. So cannot be you guys call him out. La. So you have to call one of them out. La. Which one? Well, whoever... Had... Well, one of oh. them has called me out already. <laughs> 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 so what we never fight him. Get out! Uh. No, I think I think uh I don't know. Some things I think is good to not uh <laughs> tell openly. <laughs> <laughs> but the the reason that I want a domestic fight to happen is because I think domestic it can really, abuse, bro. It's called. It can really. Hey, don't steal my joke. <laughs> eh. That's for the papers. Eh. Yeah. So basically, I think it will get a lot of attention. And there's no hate between me and Hamza. I really respect him as a fighter. But as much it's, as he... It's kind of too late after you... No, the, 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 after the names that you call him, no, man. As much as he wants to beat me, <laughs> I also want to beat him. And as much as he might believe that he's going to beat me, I also believe I'm going to beat him. Okay. So it's a, it's like a... It's a respect. It's confidence. Uh, confidence I have in myself. Because if I go into a fight, uh, maybe I'm not going to win this. Then, then boxing is not for me. I'm going to get beaten up. And there must be a reason why his team... Wants the fight to happen, and oh oh wait! So now his team wants the fight to happen. I think he, he didn't come and say I want to fight wow. you, but his team he said uh, maybe we can make the fight happen. Spicy. I hope it happens because <laughs> yeah. it will help both of our careers. That's one, and it will also I think boost the local boxing scene because Singaporeans need to see two people who know each other sort of, yes. and they know them to fight because nobody's gonna care about me fighting an African. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, they do after I lost. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but it's going to create more hype with a Singaporean versus yeah. Singaporean. Because yeah. he's got his own following, which is a lot. Mm-hmm. I have my own following, which is a lot more. No la, I don't Plus know. the 250 people who listen yeah, to the, the number one, one fight podcast in Singapore. <laughs> yeah, so I think it's going to bring a lot of people together. And it's going to bring a lot of attention. The media is going to have something exciting to write about. Yep. I think for the sports to grow, we need this to happen. Yep. Right. Before this, I actually fight. proposed to Amy to fight. Oh, Amy yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, he was yeah. one of Willip's boys. Yep. Yeah, but he retired. So. <laughs> wow, you chase him to retirement? No, no, I think he, I think he was going to retire already anyway. Okay, okay. I know you want to beat Hamza up. I know Hamza <laughs> want to beat you up. Yeah, you want to beat him up? Uh, so and do you want to beat him up? For sure. I think when the time comes. For sure. <laughs> I think for sure when for sure when the time comes, I think we will we will do our job because we love boxing. We, we all want to be the best. Yeah. And then uh, and now we the three of us I feel uh in the same weight category. I to be honest, I don't know how long I will be in this weight category. I might be going up. I might retire. I don't know. Mm. So if the time comes, the money is right, opportunity is right, the belt is right. If yep. it can bring the boxing scene to another level, I will do it in a heartbeat. That that will be actually be fun. I think what's more fun if I was an organizer is I'm gonna do a one night tournament where it's gonna be the three of you. <laughs> no, it doesn't work that way. It hey, has to be different. My day. tournament why? <laughs> I that's do why you, I want that's why you're not an organizer. <laughs> <laughs> People fight if they die like that. So it should be the three of you fighting Roy Rumble. Each other, no lah, not not maybe a not in a ring lah, in a triangle or something lah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the co-main would be uh, Fash, Fash Aida, Aida and Leona. Hey, actually, yeah. Uh, oh, actually, what? <laughs> super favorite can also be Ashik. Right. Yes. Oh, so we can do yes, a four four, yes. four man tournament yeah, because Ashik fights at Super Bantam. That's true. That's true. Anybody out there who's listening who has a lot of money to make this happen, get in yeah. contact. We can make it happen yeah. for you. Well, that, because Ashik uh, fought at Super Bantam yeah. He fought at Feather And he fought at Super Feather also oh, I, don't yeah. think he, I don't think he can make Super Bantam anymore He's a huge boy And he's growing up He's still growing I mean, I mean like, I can like you are. I, I, We definitely can fight 60 So yeah, I'm cool with it yeah. So yeah 4 of us is good man 60 a bit far for me lah But if 
<laughs> yeah, that was like the width of your left leg. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow, uh, four of us. Tyson, you are just kind of like just starting off your pro career, right? Uh, when you see people like Ridwan, uh, people like Hamza, same category, I mean, same category, but, you know, other local boxers who have a lot more experience and stuff like that, do you uh, look up to them or do you just take them as targets? Uh, well, back in Amusha, I used to look up to them, but <laughs> the, not anymore. It's <laughs> I mean, business now, bro. Yeah, nice, it's, nice. It's, it's, because you see this professional thing, we're all doing for ourselves now. So as much as we can still spar and hang out as friends, but when it comes to the real fight, I think, yeah, like you say, it's down to business. There's no more friends in the ring. So Good. you just say, give it all up. Keep it professional. Yeah. And about, what about you? And like you, you know, he's going to prepare for his second professional fight. Mm-hmm. He's still quite young compared to you who is quite old uh, and has suffered a lot more brain damage than him. Uh, what, what kind of advice would you give him? I would say enjoy the fight, enjoy the process. Um, aim high. Um, aim to fight me. Because I'll be waiting for you, bro. <laughs> I'll be I did not ask for a WWE. <laughs> I'll be waiting for you. Oh, I'm asking for his advice. I didn't do him a lot of trouble anything you saw because I just shouted into the mic. Yeah, but I think just enjoy the process. Yeah. I think all the belts, all the victory, all what whatever will come naturally. So as long as you love it, I think um it will be less likely for you to stray away from the path because at some point of time you will hit a roadblock where you might feel like you don't want to do it anymore or because of the job because of the family but mm-hmm. because if you love it it will be a little bit easier to stay the course and fight on nice nice all right tyson i want to thank you so much for coming on the one man show uh, <laughs> if anybody needs to get in touch with you or go to your gym can you tell them where it, where they can find you your ig Oh, my IG. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where yeah. can they follow you on Instagram? Um, you just t- writing my name, Daniel J underscore L I L. You can search me on Instagram. You know, you can write to me. You can ask me anything about boxing and all that. And I can, you know, I can reply even after time. <laughs> 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 if I have the time. <laughs> Do you have uh, uh, anything to say? Uh, shout outs or anything that you want to give up? Uh, yeah, I just want to see. Um, hoping for have a reply from Hamza. Wow. <laughs> oh, He's gonna be yeah. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna make this fight happen. We read on, cause uh. So this know. is your message to Hamza. Okay, we let us <laughs> start. Okay. okay, you cut the WWE promo. <laughs> what is your message right, right, to Hamza? Now, what is my message to Hamza? Um, Please don't cancel the sparring. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean we can go ahead with the sparring, but um, as much as I like to see it and the crowd wants to see it, I think you should have a fight with Ridon for the oh. title belt. Oh, he really wants to hype it up. <laughs> yeah, and I mean you know after after that I'll, I'll just because I'll be the one challenging the challenger, the winner. Ooh. So it's all this shit for me. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, but other than that, I would say if boxing is just a really fun sport and competitive sport, you know, to be in. It's not all about working each other. You know, it's all about having fun and you know, I talking mean, all shit. Th- yeah, <laughs> talking shit. <laughs> There's a lot of things that happen during boxing, but um, I mean, all, after all these years in amateur, mm-hmm. especially we had a. So called assist. I mean, we had a assistant coach that you know left. You know. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. and then we had a prodigy of coach. You know, from Australia, that guy. You know, there's a lot of things that happen. But oh, we had we had a coach from Australia. I don't know, pro- prodigy. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. I think we both know who you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> but that's so. another story for another time. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that's about it. Boxing. All right. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh one shout out. Uh, <laughs> I need to practice on this but okay for those listening you can follow me on Instagram it's tcw.legends I will be updating my fight uh, my fight soon it will be in June I will be telling you the date the exact date and also the location so if you want to sponsor me you want to see some funny videos some sad <laughs> videos you watch follow like and also when we tag our boxers that come to the show do follow them do show them the support because the sponsors want to see numbers because if they have freaking five 
followers like us when we started this going to be quite sad so yeah. please also follow the one man show <laughs> yes please. the one man show uh, the one man show follow us on Instagram Spotify YouTube Facebook <clears throat> almost everywhere you can find us on the one man show uh, actually on second thought can we cut out the Hamza part <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just realized I just hype it, hype it up too wrong yeah no it's not gonna <laughs> happen oh, really. it's on it's gonna be on forever G for likes uh, <laughs> oh my god <laughs> as you can tell people who come here have fun sometimes they regret it like Mr. Tyson himself uh, yes. if you're if you're looking for boxing lessons you can hit board them up uh, read one at legends fight spot where is it at It's at 43 Carpenter Street, third floor. We have 20 sessions for $200 only. <laughs> That is $10 per session. What is your excuse? Please sign up. I have a lot of excuses, but I'm not going to say it here. What about you? Where can they find you to get lessons right. from you? Find me at USC Gym Singapore, which is at Seating Link at the underpass. For uh, prices, I just refer to my uh, sales consultant. Oh, <laughs> he got sales consultant. Oh. My level is <laughs> right. Redon's sales consultant is himself, by the See way. See my level? <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, thank you so much for listening to The One Man Show. We've grown from five listeners to... I think 250 yeah. and we're reaching another 250 on Instagram also. So yes. uh, we're going to keep this going. We're going to try and... Uh, with the consistency. We're going to try to defend our title as the number one fight sport <laughs> <Why did only? laughs> podcast in Singapore because we're the only one. Uh, so yeah, hit us up if you have any you know questions or anything. One is uh, handling all our social media because he has more time than me uh, and Adib is just lazy. Uh, at the same time, uh, if you wanna if you wanna get in touch in uh, for sponsorship or anything like that, our email is in our is in our description, description yeah. and stuff like that. So yeah, thank you again for listening to us. Uh, we're gonna keep this coming. Hopefully, we can get Hamza on the on yeah. the show one day. Yes, but I already spoke to his manager. It's okay, oh, but I think okay. right now Ridon is not ready. Because we don't have a chair that's low enough so that Hamza will be the same height as him. <laughs> Hamza that. is very tall, by the way. Oh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, thanks for listening to the One Man Show. We'll see you guys next time. See Bye! <laughs> I know you want to beat Hamza up. I know Hamza want to beat you up. Yo, you want to beat him up? Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. And do you want to beat him up? <laughs> For sure. I think when the time comes... For sure. <laughs> <laughs>